Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about our beautiful neighbor Mars, but specifically about potentially creating a artificial magnetic field around this beautiful planet in order to help us colonize it in the future. Can we actually do it? Is it going to help us? Well, let's find out and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So in one of the previous videos, you may have learned that uh, today Mars actually has a little bit of magnetic field around it. As a matter of fact, here we can try to enable it just so we can maybe show you how much of it it has. It's uh, about 1 40th of the magnetic field on Earth, but unfortunately here you can't even see it. It's so little that you cannot even see it. It's uh, enough though to create a little bit of atmosphere on Mars and this atmospheric pressure currently has stabilized around the level of one um, one hundredth of the atmosphere on Earth. So here it's about one percent of Earth atmosphere. But we think that if we were to actually somehow re-enable the magnetic field, basically if we were to make it stronger, possibly by at least a factor of 30, but maybe even closer to that on Earth, so let's just say if we were to make the magnetic field here about like 0.1 Gauss, which is about a third of atmospheric pressure, uh, not as, uh, which is about a third of magnetosphere on Earth, this would be enough for Mars to start stabilizing its own atmosphere at a higher level. Now, how could we potentially do it? Well, about uh, a year ago, uh, in 2017, NASA actually made a very interesting proposition. It wasn't really about building anything on the surface, it wasn't really about exploding the insides of uh, Mars and basically trying to re-enable the um, dynamo on the inside through like some sort of a nuclear explosion like it has been done in some of the sci-fi movies. But it was something that has to do um, with placing something in orbit. As a matter of fact, uh, we need to go back to the idea of Lagrange points, about which I've talked about in one of the previous videos. You can check it out on the channel where I explain how Lagrange points work. But there's a point right between Sun and Mars, right here, known as L1. This is a Lagrange point right in this region between the planet and the star. And the interesting thing about this uh, point, including this point, is that you can actually place an object there and it's going to stay right there relatively stably for a pretty long time. You just have to possibly move it around a little bit just to stabilize it, uh, its orbit once in a while. Um, but you can actually just place something here indefinitely. And um, around Earth, we have several satellites in, in this uh, region that usually are responsible for either taking the readings of the sun and sending the data back to Earth or looking at Earth from a distance and reporting on things like weather conditions and such. Uh, for Mars, this is approximately 320 radii of Mars away from the planet. In other words, if you were to take the radius of Mars and multiply it by approximately 320, you would get a point that's about a million kilometers away from uh, Mars. And here, let's just pick an object. Let's do the arrival spacecraft because it does look really cool. Uh, and place this um, at a distance of about a million kilometers away from Mars, which is approximately over here. And to be more exact, I believe it's about 1,088,000 kilometers. Now in this game it might or might not stay in this orbit because Lagrange points um, are not really very exactly calculated in Universe Sandbox. But here, if you were to actually place something, um, it would stay here and it would be right in this position for a very, very long time. Now what exactly are we placing here? Well, there is a really interesting study that studied the effects of and this is actually from a website um, at astrobiology.nasa.gov that talks about how to give Mars atmosphere. And basically, by placing a very large magnet right here, a magnet that generates about one Tesla worth of uh, magnetic field, you could create an artificial magnetosphere in this region that would then create what's known as a magnetotail that would protect Mars 
and all of the surrounding area around Mars from uh, being affected by solar radiation. Now this idea is actually pretty brilliant and it's something we haven't really thought about until very recently. So you don't really have to create a magnetosphere around Mars, but you could create a magnetosphere in this region and it would spread uh, and cover the area where Mars is located. This is actually kind of what's, what happens around the gas giants such as for example Jupiter, which if you were to ever look at its super powerful uh, magnetic field, you would see that it actually generates a kind of a tail that spreads all the way, um, even almost touching Saturn. So this uh, idea of using a magnetic uh, tail to basically protect Mars is something that's not only possible, but is actually pretty brilliant. Now, I don't know if we can actually enable magnetosphere here. I don't think it's possible, but let's try. Let's create uh, let's let's see if we can create a magnetic field of about two Tesla and See if it actually goes anywhere and it looks like it doesn't really create anything unfortunately That's because this is just a, a problem with the simulation and not really What you would expect in real life, but you know what? It's a video game. So what do you expect? Anywho, so let's say we actually were able to protect Mars from the uh, solar radiation by creating this artificial magnetosphere, would that actually help us? Well, here's the thing. The studies currently indicate that by basically protecting Mars from solar radiation would very likely increase the um, natural levels of its atmosphere. It might actually increase so much that the temperature here would go up by about four degrees. In other words, the atmospheric pressure will actually raise just a little bit, but it will be enough for it to increase the um, overall temperature. And as soon as this temperature increases by 4 degrees, this will actually initiate uh, the natural release of carbon dioxide ice that's pretty much everywhere on Mars. And what happens when you release CO2 into the air? Well, it, it obviously increases the greenhouse gases. And so we think that by doing all of this, we will naturally increase the temperature of Mars from the average that it has right now to possibly higher levels that would um, very likely create some sort of atmospheric pressure that would possibly even be enough for us to just stand on the surface without using any spacesuits. Now, we don't really know how much the equilibrium will increase by, but we know that it will definitely increase at least a little bit. And as you can see right now, there's actually a bit of an atmosphere forming already because I added atmospheric pressure and we now have clouds and there's probably some uh, water vapor in there. Um, so this artificial dipole or the artificial magnet in, in between Mars and the sun, that's... Uh, I actually don't know where it is anymore. I lost it. Somewhere out there. There it is. Arrival spacecraft. It's just a little bit off. Um, but basically, if it was placed in L1 region of space between Mars and the Sun, it would very likely create something like this. Now, there is still a problem though. Mars is a relatively small planet. It's not very massive. Its mass is only 8.7 masses of the Moon or about 10% of Earth. And that creates another problem. This actually takes us to another graph that I wanted to show you where you can see the escape velocity of various gases um, versus temperature on the surface. So you can see that both Earth and Venus are relatively similar in mass, and so they can kind of maintain pretty much everything down here. So water vapor is fine, ammonia, methane, helium and hydrogen do escape because their escape velocity is higher, and this is why we have gas giants, because they captured all of those uh, molecules. But stuff like water vapor, which is the most potent um, greenhouse gas, and of course ammonia as well, and methane, these gases are the reason why Earth has such a comfortable atmosphere and why we have such a good temperature. Mars, unfortunately, is right there, right below this. So the water vapor will still escape from the surface, which is super unfortunate because this makes Mars very, very difficult to colonize. But on top of this, if you were to increase the temperature of Mars from here where it is right now to where Earth is, right around here, it might also start losing oxygen and might actually just have atmosphere filled with nothing but carbon dioxide. 
it will also unlikely to have water vapor it's also unlikely to have ammonia and methane because all of these very important uh, molecules that are present in our atmosphere will probably just escape their escape velocity is too high so mars will not be able to to hold them it's just going to be barren with some oxygen a little bit of nitrogen uh, and a lot of carbon dioxide in other words even with a relatively powerful uh, magnetic field on the surface here even if we were able to kind of make this happen martian atmosphere is just not very friendly to gases needed for humans to survive now this doesn't mean that um, it's not going to be habitable it might be habitable for some other organisms and for things like plants for example it might actually be very comfortable but we're never going to stop losing important things like water vapor um, even oxygen so in that sense mars is just not really that planet that we need to be colonizing it's too small venus is much better and venus is where we should be looking at anyway that's all i wanted to talk about in this video and hopefully now you know a little bit more about colonization of mars and the difficulties and ideas that we have right now thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys tomorrow come back tomorrow to learn something else let's launch something really interesting at mars and see what happens to it space out and as always bye bye and here come a few interesting moons that will probably cause Mars a little bit of a problem. And notice how the um, magnetosphere actually changes as I seem to be colliding more and more stuff with Mars. That's probably because Mars is actually growing bigger and bigger in size.